Welcome to this week's web class. This week, we are discussing why living with regret will keep you from your dream life. I'm Keisha Golder, and I help women define their unique purpose so they can live a life that they created on their own terms. I also created the Your Life Purpose Makeover Journey. It's a three-stage, nine-step program developed to help you change your life, but we're going to talk more about that later. As always, I want to remind you that there will be a question and answer section towards the end of the presentation, so if you can hold all questions until then, it will be greatly appreciated. Before we jump into tonight's topic, let's do a quick recap of what we talked about last week. Last week, when we talked about anxiety, what it was, how it affects us, and how we can overcome it so that we can live the lives that we want. This week, we are talking regret, what regret is, how regret affects us, and ways that we can cope and overcome regret. So let's jump right on in. What is regret? Regret is a negative emotional state where you blame yourself for a bad outcome. Regret can feel like loss or sorrow, but it's about something that you wished you could have done or something that you can redo. Regret can be a helpful emotion only if it is changing you so that you can refocus on something and take corrective actions so that you don't make the same mistake again. So, we've all experienced regret in life. What are some of the biggest regrets that people have? The first one, working so much at the expense of your family and friends. I've been there and I'm sure some of you have been there. We just don't understand or we just don't know how to create the balance between work and home life. And when this happens, we tend to spend more time working and missing the important things with family and friends because we feel that if we're working, we're bringing in the money to take care of our family. So if we don't find that balance later on in life, we tend to regret spending so much time at work and not as much time as we may have wanted to with family and friends. The second regret is standing up to bullies in school and in life. We all have had, whether it was a personal experience with a bully or someone that we know has had an experience with bullies. We've seen it happen. A lot of times, people regret not standing up for themselves in school or in life. You Bullies are not just children. Bullies can be adults. They can be in the workplace. You can encounter a bully anywhere. So when we have this experience and we choose not to engage because we feel like engaging may only encourage them more. But later on down the line, whether it's a day later or months later, we feel that we didn't speak up for ourselves. And those residual effects weigh on our confidence and our self-esteem because we didn't stand up for ourselves and we feel like, we're not living up to what we could be living up to because we don't know how to take action when it comes to ourselves. Another regret that a lot of people have in life is breaking up with someone they may consider their true love or getting dumped by them. Now, all of us have had relationships, even friendships hurt when you, I guess, have a friendship breakup. So you regret leaving this person. And by you regretting leaving this person, whether it was your true love or not, whether you thought you were going to get married or not, it keeps you from fully committing 
and giving your all to new situations because you're constantly thinking about the past and that person in the past. So you're not able to enjoy and appreciate all the things that you had before you, whether you're currently in a relationship or you are working towards being in a relationship. A fourth way that, you know, people regret things is worrying about what others think about you. I have been there, as with most of these, I always worried about what somebody thought about the decisions that I made. And I would tell you that I didn't care or that I wasn't worried about what somebody else said or thought, but the truth really was I was worried about it. And that left me with placing more value in what others thought about me than what I thought about myself. So I was teaching myself that I had little value to offer anyone, including myself, because I wasn't able to not worry about what other people thought, not worry about what other people felt I should be doing. That's a regret that a lot of people live with. You know, you'll hear people say, if only I had lived the way that I wanted to live, if only I chose the career that I wanted to choose instead of the career someone else wanted me to choose. Not having enough confidence. That plays into worrying about what others think about you because you're not being confident in your, your abilities to make decisions for yourself. You're not being confident in knowing what you deserve and how you deserve it and saying these things and not just saying them, but saying them and believing them and being able to make other people believe them. Not that you have to make other people believe them, but when you say, I want to be a doctor, the only way someone else is going to stop saying, well, I want you to be a lawyer is if they are convinced that you firmly believe that you want to be a doctor. Otherwise, they're still going to harp on it. Not to say that you have to follow what they want you to do, because if you're confident enough that you're going to be a doctor, who cares about the lawyer? But without that confidence, that person continuously saying, I want you to be a lawyer, I want you to be a lawyer, I want you to be a lawyer is going to wait on you and break you down. That's why we need, we regret not having a lot of confidence in ourselves because we always end up breaking down for someone else or doing things that other people want us to do because they don't believe that we can do it. And deep down inside, we don't believe that we can do it without the confidence. So when they keep harping on whatever it is that they want us to do, we just cave in. And one of the last ones is living the life your parents wanted you to live instead of the one that you wanted. We've, we have either, either experienced this personally or know people who have done something, lived the life that their parents wanted them to live instead of doing what they wanted to. And you'll hear some of them say, if only I had done or lived the way that I wanted to live. If only I went to college out of state instead of staying home because my parents wanted me to remain close. If only. You can't go back and change it, but what you can do now is begin to live the life that you want so that you don't have the regrets. I was one of these people. I lived the, not what my parents wanted, but I lived the life my grandparents wanted for a long time because it was all, I was conditioned, go to school, graduate high school, go to college, graduate college get married, have children, get that good government job. And it all sounded good because I didn't know any better until I knew better, until I knew, mm, I don't think that this path is straight and narrow for me like this. I don't think that this is exactly what I want to do. I don't believe that I want to sit behind a desk every day for the rest of my life 
doing something that I am not passionate about. So that was when I decided to start living and doing the things that I wanted to do. Of course, these are not all of the regrets that people have in life, but these are some of the ones that stuck out to me the most because I feel that they're the most relatable. Now, in regret, there are differences. Men and women, men and women differ in the things that they regret. And so take a relationship, for instance. Women will regret leaving a relationship. The men will not regret leaving the relationship. They'll just move on to someone else. And they will then realize after moving on to someone else that what they had or the, the individual that they had was better for them. You know, people in the United States experience more regret than people in other countries. And when we look back over our lives, if we look back over a short period of time, the regret that we often feel is over the things that we did not, the things that we did as opposed to looking back over a longer period of time and we look and we regret the things that we did not do. So all regret does not look the same. Everyone does not experience the same type of regret, regardless of race, gender, all of those things. We're all different. So regret is going to look different for everyone. Now, how does regret affect us? Really simply put, regret affects our minds. So your thinking process becomes clouded. Mistakes are easily, more easily made. You make poor choices that lead to stress, which affects your overall health. Uh, your negative thought processes affect your brain chemistry. And when your brain chemistry is affected, that creates stress. And again, your overall health is affected. And so you may think that regret is not affecting you. You may think that the stress is not affecting you. You may think that your negative thinking does not affect you. It affects you mentally which can affect you emotionally because stress is an emotional reaction sometimes, which can cause to eating, which can cause you to gain weight, which can cause other health problems. So it affects our minds, which if we don't grab a hold of it right away, can affect the rest of our bodies. Now, when we release or releasing the negative effects of regret is done by finding contentment. And when I say finding contentment, I don't mean becoming complacent. I simply mean being happy with the, what has come into your life while understanding that things come into your life, things leave. And if something is leaving, nine times out of 10, something Bigger and better is waiting to really place the thing that is leaving. The easiest way that I can give an example for this is for you to think about relationships. You know, if you've been in a relationship with somebody that you thought you could not, like you would never break up, you couldn't breathe without, you couldn't think without, and then you break up. And of course, you're going to be distraught. But and you go through your grieving process and, you know, you're, you begin living without this person. And you find someone else. And this other person is literally everything that you ever wanted. Every, they check every box on your list. This is the happiest you've ever been. That's what finding contentment is about. It's not about saying, oh, well, I'm in this place. I'm going to stay in this place. I can't go any further. It's just finding happiness in where you are and knowing that things come and they go. And if they do leave, that is okay because something else that's going to give you what you really want, that's going to make you happy, that it's going to be better than the thing that left is coming in. 
So that's how we can begin to release the negative effects of actually having regret or being affected by regret. Now, how can we cope with regret to get back the life, the, to get to the life that we want? Well, we can understand our choices. Everyone has a choice to make. And mainly it's two choices. You either go left or you go right. And each choice has its consequence or has an effect. So when you understand the things that you are willing to do and that you're not willing to do, it helps you have less regrets about taking actions because if you regret not moving 5,000 miles away for a job that's going to pay you less money, but you haven't understood that you don't want to move away, you're not willing to move away for less money, then you, then you don't understand that it's not a regret. You made the best decision that there was for you. You have to be able to understand the type of person that you are in order to understand your choices. You have to know what you're willing to do and what you are not willing to do. I always say this journey that we are on to find our life purpose, to get the life that we want, always requires you to do self-reflection. And the only way that you can understand what choices you're going to make or the type of person you are is to actually sit down and say, well, am I going to do this? And if I do this, how is this going to affect me? Am I willing to do this? And if you're not willing to do that, why are you not willing to do that? What are the the, the the consequences that come along with you being not being willing to do something. Is it going to be harmful? Is it going to be a betterment for you if you do not do it? So this process always requires you to self-reflect, to really get to know who you are. Because without knowing who you are, deep down in those dark crevices and tunnels that you don't show anybody, you won't make the right choices you won't get to where you want to be. You won't live that dream life because you're not being honest with yourself. And honestly, that is the only person that requires you to be honest, that should always require you to be honest is yourself. Now, the second way that you can cope with regrets is to reframe your regret regrets. Now, what do I mean by reframing your regrets? Turn them into a learning experience. Just because you regret it not doing something does not mean you can't learn from it. Think about it. Go back to the situation with the bully. You regret it not standing up for yourself. But when you reframe it, you've learned that you don't like people take you don't like people picking on you and you don't like not having a hand in how the situation plays out you don't want to be someone seen as um a pushover you don't want to be seen as someone who has someone else fight their battles for them so then you learn to be a little bit more confident. Then you can learn different ways to stand up with yourself that doesn't have to do with violence. These are, you, you can always reframe situations. Just like a relationship. You regret losing the relationship, but what is losing that relationship teaching you? Is it teaching you how to love yourself more? Is it teaching you the things that you are willing to accept in a relationship and the things that you aren't willing to accept? <coughs> Everything is a learning experience and regrets are no different. The third way that you can cope with your regrets is to choose action. Never stand still, never be stagnant. There's always a course of action that can lead you to make better decisions. 
So always be willing to choose to make an action, to take action so that you don't regret. All of the shots that you don't take, you never make. Even though if you can take 100 shots and you only make 10, that's 10 more shots that you have made as opposed to not making any. Regret is something that, yes, we all are going to experience at some point in our lives, but it's not something that we have to live with to the point where we can't live the lives that we want. We can't get those dream houses. We can't have those dream careers because we're stuck in the past constantly regretting things. We are not living in the moment and, and being happy with what we have because we regret something that happened in 1972, something that happened last year, something that can possibly happen tomorrow. Some things you just can't control. And those definitely should not be things that you regret and some things that you can control, but it's no reason that you can or should regret the things that you can't control either. Take action. Make sure that you're doing things to keep you moving forward, to keep you moving on the route that you want to take. Grieve for a second, but suck it up and keep moving. Because regret is only going to hold you back from getting to where you want to be. I want to leave you with something to remember. The more energy you give regret, the more hurt you will cause yourself because you're continuously reliving whatever it is that you're regretting. And the more you relive it, the longer it's going to take for you to come out of it and detach from it. And so now, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask them. You can type them in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and ask the question. I love to keep in touch with everyone. You know, you can follow me on Facebook at Coach Keisha Golder, on YouTube at Keisha Golder, LinkedIn, Keisha Golder, and of course, my website, KeishaGolder.com. You can go through the website, you can book. Uh, opportunity to talk to me. You can look at blog posts. You can look at past web classes. You can even send me an email with your suggestions of things that you want to hear me talk about. Now, next week, because I am your life purpose coach, we are going to talk about the difference between your soul purpose and your life purpose. Here's the life purpose makeover journey again. Remember, I said it's a three-stage, nine-step program. Each stage has three steps where you dig in deep to get to know everything that is important to you in that stage. For instance, in the first stage, which is knowing me, you're going to know where you are, where you are, and where you want to be. Yes, we'll identify some of the things that have held you back, like core values. Are the core values that you holding still the core values that you need to hold? Are they serving you or are they hindering you? The same with belief systems. Has your belief systems changed from when you gave them as a child? Are these things that you actually believe in? Or are these things that you just continue to say that you believe because it's what you were taught when you were growing up? Knowing your environment, which is stage two. Knowing and understanding what your skills and talents are, how they can be used to help you get the life that you want, how they can be used to position you so that you are able to fulfill your dreams. What are your passion and interests? Is it something that you're passionate about that can lead you down that path to fulfillment? What experience have you had in life? How can those experiences help you get to where you need to be? How can they shape you or show you the different opportunities that you have before you so that you can earn fulfillment or gain fulfillment the way that you want? The third stage, knowing my path. What is your vision? How do you see your, how do you see your life looking? How, what does that dream life look to you? 
What does it look like? What does it smell like? Taste like? All of these things are very important. You need to, you can't accomplish it if you can't see it. What is that vision? And how does that vision fit into that purpose? What is that purpose? Is it only one purpose? Or is it multiple purpose, purposes? And if it's multiple purposes, guess what? We create the blueprint for you to be able to fulfill any purpose that you come across, whether it's your life purpose, your soul purpose, which we'll talk about more next week, whether you just feel that you have served that one purpose that you came across when you were however old, and now you feel that you have another one. This is what the journey, the life purpose makeover journey is about, truly getting to know yourself so that what Whatever comes your way, whether it's another purpose, whether it is you just needing to redefine yourself, you're able to do it and you're able to do it confidently because you know without a shadow of a doubt who you are, where you want to be, and how you want to get there. So I thank you for joining me tonight and I look forward to seeing you next week.